Okay, hello everyone. Wamanyeka. I'd like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. And we all here pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging. All right, so just before we get into the actual talk, I'm just going to explain a bit about who I am. All right, so I'm Devon. I'm a senior ish developer um, working for the federal government. Uh, I'm also Indigenous uh, with the Gangalita, Gadawa, and Wanyi uh, tribes, which is just off the coast of Mornington Island, which is basically far, far, far north. Uh, I'm also uh, British as well, so my accent may or may not come out in the presentation. I don't know, it, it likes to jump. Uh, so yeah, in, in terms of work, uh, for the last five and a half years, I've spent, um, I spent my time in the federal government uh, with the last two being specifically as the tech lead for the Technology Innovation Center. Uh, the Technology Innovation Center is a very, is a very obscure, um, obscure but pivotal, uh, plays a, a very obscure but pivotal role in a portion of the federal government. And it's actually a physical technology center in uh, a small suburb in, uh, called Tuggeranong. And I was the only remote, uh, remote person. So I didn't have to, I didn't have to move to the, the cold icy tundra of uh, the ACT. Um, <laughs> so I'm also an ex attempted founder. Um, the only reason I actually wanted to get a job was because I was, I was attempting to run a startup. I was get you know, doing, um, doing all the startup stuff, building, you know, trying to, uh, trying to build something that people want. Um, but then I ran out of money and then I was like, well, I don't want to go for seed funding. So it's probably best just to go on indeed and try and get a job. Um, five years later, obviously, obviously, you know, mixed attempt at being, um, a founder. So X attempted, uh, but the dream is still there. The dream still exists. Uh, also the first app I made was in 2013, uh, with windows phone, <laughs> which I was, I, I personally was very, uh, I was very excited about Windows Phone. Um, the fact that I didn't have Instagram or Snapchat was a bit depressing. I wasn't exactly the, the cool kid in, uh, in my college in England. Um, and also I've been, I guess, programming. The first line of code was in grade 10 in like 2010 or 2011. Um, so I did, did it for a little bit, a little bit. Um, here's uh, some of the tech that I use. Uh, it's very random. We've got Angular, Next.js, Swift, Unity, Flutter, Quick, which is very new, um, also from the creator of Angular, bit of Go, bit of Nest, uh, bit of .NET, uh, etc. Okay, so this talk is going to be about creating an immersive AI experience with Angular, Vertex AI, and Google Cloud Run. Cloud Run. Now, the subtitle of this talk is "The Design is Very Human." <clears throat> so. Let's see if we can get the demo going on. Hey, Devin, how are you today? I'm going good, but I'm seeking advice on how I can effectively manage my team. I'm glad to hear that you're doing well. To effectively manage your team, it's important to set clear expectations, provide regular feedback, and recognize and reward their contributions. Remember to foster a positive and supportive work environment. I have one specific team member who wants a promotion, but I don't think they're ready yet. Team members who show ambition are always a great asset. Consider working with this team member to develop a plan for them to improve their skills and gain the experience necessary for the promotion they desire. Okay, so that is, uh, that is just an example um, interaction. I currently don't have any team members, which it's kind of kind of great in a way. <laughs> People management is tricky. Um, definitely prefer to be on the uh, the dev stuff. But the elevator pitch for uh, Gemini Coach is basically a pseudo internal HR tool for Googlers to interact with. the The, the problem that I was thinking about addressing was there's there's some Googlers and they they're having various issues, either HR issues, various management issues, or even you know, they're struggling to lead a team and they want impartial advice from someone who's available 24 seven, their manager, you would hope isn't available 24 seven. That's, you know, seems like a bit of a stretch, but the AI, um, potentially could be. Oh, oh we don't want to run again. 
Okay, before I get into the actual technical implementation of how I'm doing this, I think it's better to take a bit of a step back and to look at it from a more high level conceptual point of view. And how I'm, I'm kind of looking at it is I initially made this project. I've made this project many, many, many different times over the last year or so um, using different use cases, different technology stacks. But it's mostly about exploring different mediums and combining mediums because the current, um, the current exponential growth of LLMs, large language models, Gen AI, all that cool stuff, it's really, um, it's really quite, quite new. You know, ChatGPT was only released like just over a year ago, um, but the space has changed so rapidly since. But the way we communicate with it hasn't really changed that much. We're communicating with it kind of similar to like really rubbish chatbots from like some random website that just never worked and would just redirect you to a link. And so I wanted to explore potential way to you know, explore different mediums to find the most optimal approach. And I guess the most meta approach um, to use like game, uh, game terminology. Um, that's also technology agnostic. Sure, this, this application is using all the, all the Google, Google products um, galore. But in order to make something that users want and that customers want, and that is a good user experience, you need to think about it not just from a technical implementation, but from a yeah more of a high level of how how could we address this problem to actually solve a real a real um, or how can we address this problem uh, to implement a real uh, a real solution and not doing it the other way around where we're creating some you know cool solution and then we're finding a problem because then we're always going to have a mismatch in what we what our expectations of what our user wants. And what our user actually wants. And with this specific um, use case, I think about it in with like three different mediums. So I'm thinking about it uh, with about a brain with the text generation. I'm also thinking about the, uh, uh, the, the you know someone's ears or ear canals about the speech to text. Um, I'm also thinking about the vocal cords on how to you know how to actually uh, articulate. Um, what you're saying, because we really want to have this to be a more human centric approach rather than just some sort of, um, you know, some sort of techie abstraction that we haven't properly thought about. Because if we make a more immersive experience, then we, our users um, can have a more immersive experience. And this is this also isn't attempting to replace your manager or your mentor. Um, this could never this could never really, you know, replace um, you know, replace that level of connection, but it can also offer an alternative instead. Okay, so the actual implementation. Okay, so we have uh, we have two levels here. We have the deployment level and the tech level. So with the tech level, I'm using Angular as the front end, and then that is uh, having a little chat via an Angular service to a Go Fiber uh, backend API. And then uh, the, Go, the Go API is talking to, to Vertex AI. And Vertex AI has a bunch of different offerings in the, uh, the AI space. Um, but here, we're using three different offerings. We're using text-to-speech, the Gen AI um, aspect, and then the speech aspect. And the Gen AI aspect, you can pass in different models. So if you've ever explored uh, uh, Vertex AI Garden or the model garden, there's loads of different models. and Know, loads of potential um, potential custom models that you can use if you just put in the effort. Because at the moment, I'm just using the, I believe the Gemini Pro 1.001 model, and you know that's very very kind of like broad. Um, that, that's made for like a very broad use case. But you know, helping helping someone in in this type of um, you know HR coaching and mentoring is more specific. So if you want to make a better experience, you can use a more tailored model. But here we're just using Gemini. Uh, and how we're actually deploying this, um, so technically it's not in production now, um, but how you would deploy this is at the moment I'm using Vercel. Um, you, you, you can use Google Cloud Run, uh, but I, I, I just use Vercel because that's the that's the one I generally just use. But then you can also um, utilize Google Cloud Run. And Google Cloud Run is super easy, super easy to set up. Um, they've also added the ability to 
build from repository, um, which is really efficient. I, I swear I uh, tried to build a Google Cloud Run uh, API six months ago, and I don't think they had that option, but it just makes it a lot easier. And so you can just go to go, go, go to Google Cloud Run. Um, there's obviously, I'm skipping a lot of steps because this is, this is more just kind of like a broader um, understanding of what you can create. But you can go to Google Cloud Run, create a, create a cool little project, and then just go to your GitHub or whatever Git provider you're using, and then you know very quickly deploy your application. So the actual the actual code aspect. Let's uh, let's have a little look. So this is the uh, the backend API code, and so we have our first. I'm just playing there. It was, it was a bit tricky to see, but luckily this uh, this repo. Uh, is open source, uh, the front end and the back end. Um, so uh, if you're interested, you can check it out um, after. But yeah, uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty small. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just try to um, explain it more. Uh, explain it more. So yeah, it's, it's very simple. The, the first, for the first function, we have Vertex AI text-to-speech. And it's just basically taking in, um, you know, taking in a, a message um, by the way and seeking some credentials because you didn't need to do some annoying authentication uh, that's also why this application isn't deployed because i want i like i like the idea of doing things quick but i also like the, the, the idea of doing things right um and credential management is you know, take a little bit of time but we're accessing the might be able to make bigger maybe. yeah okay. Can we, uh, can we make it bigger maybe um so yeah we're accessing the texas speech which is just a module that we're just importing um, that's out of view, but it's yeah, easy, easy peasy module. And we're making a new client for that. And then we're accessing the simplified speech uh, with a few different parameters. And here we're just using uh, the input source, so the text, the string, um, and then we're just using the language code and the name. Uh, and the language code, you can you might have heard like a bit of an Australian accent. That's because we're passing in. Um, the name of the uh, the name of the speech synthesis as Australian, uh, and then just audio audio encoding um, bits and pieces like that. Uh, then on the uh, on your yeah on your right is the speech text. Uh, the speech text is a bit more complicated because we're dealing with an audio file, um, and not, we're not just dealing with plain text. So that can that can also be a little bit of um, a little bit tricky. But at the end of the day, the, um, the audio file is just a bit of data, right? And we're just sending. Um, we're just sending that data in the required required format. So here, we're just establishing um, a struct of audio data. Um, it's just what it expects, uh, and that's just a byte array. And then we're establishing on our client again, and we're doing the the recognize. And then we're identifying the encoding. So that's the encoding that we're doing in the uh, on the front end. Um, the next stage, the next bit is the front end, uh, and then just specifying. Um, other other parameters, uh, the language code, um, et cetera. And then the uh, the bottom the bottom left is the actual interacting with uh, with Gemini. So here, now I'm doing it the hacky the hacky old way here, where I'm uh, yeah, you, if you look down to you know, let's see oh, it's kind of, of get in the way. <laughs> Get away a little, <laughs> a little bit, um, but but basically, uh, yeah, yeah. A bit blurry. Apologise for people with uh, can't see that, which is probably most people. Um, but yeah, there we're specifying the generative model, which is vertex model name, and in this use case, it's Gemini Pro One, whatever. And then you can see in the Gemini.txt, which is the actual request to generate um, the response, you, the prediction response. We're actually doing, that, doing the hacky way and we have an initial prompt. And the initial prompt is basically, um, it's, a, it's a line of text um, that comes under the, uh, the, very, the very technical field of prompt engineering uh, that basically allows, allows you to tell, um, tell the AI what to do. Um, this is the strategy that was used uh, when you know this, these types of applications were first first starting to use, there's definitely better strategies, but this is just a proof of concept uh, alpha, uh, if you will. <coughs> so that's that's that bit. <coughs> okay, so we have the 
Angular service. Free, free simple Angular service, um, where it's just basically doing, doing API calls. Uh, so the, the speech to text is just taking in um, a UN8 array. And uh, I don't have the I don't have the code snippet here, but what I'm basically doing is I'm using the um, the media devices API to record record audio, and it can basically you can specify um, you know that you're recording audio, and then you can start recording it, and then it, you can then push it into an array um, a byte array to then send it to back to the API, and then the text to speech, pretty simple, um, some. Some speech synthesis tools won't say out um, certain certain characters, but uh, Vertex AI says says out various emojis and stuff. So I'm just using an emoji regex uh, just to get rid of get rid of the emojis because um, sometimes it responds with you know fun little emojis and stuff. And yeah, we just put in the uh, transform text. And yeah, response type is blob because we're uh, yeah we're expecting we're expecting some sort of um, audio blob form um, that Vertex generates. And um, the code is out of view here, but you basically establish uh, an audio file and then just pass in the blob, the blob array. Uh, pretty simple to do. And then the, the generate message is one of the most simplest API requests you can possibly do. You're just passing in, um, just passing in a message in a, in a JSON format. So that is uh, <laughs> that is that um, is a QR code for my. GitHub repo. Um, so that's that's just my, well, actually, that's a, a QR code just for my GitHub. And if you just check out the pinned section, there's a, uh, there's the Gemini, uh, the Gemini coach um, in the pinned, in the pinned section. And that's also my LinkedIn. So yeah, just a, just a fun little hacky project. Um, it, it's not something I've definitely worked too much on. I work on like loads of random things. Uh, but it's just some fun little use case. Um, also, one of the main reasons I wanted to do it is I wanted to see if I could just recreate uh, recreate the aesthetic style of Bard because um, the style the styling is using Tailwind, of course. Um, and yeah, just a fun little uh, fun little application. Uh, so yeah, do we have uh, any questions um, in the in the audience? Hello, how's it going? Hey. Um, so. Um, but it's uh, Gemini is multimodal, mm -hmm. so and speech and you're doing speech to text. And but did you say that you're getting audio back? Uh, so, okay. So the Gemini multimodal modal, multimodal is a different API request or is a different package. Um, for this, I'm just using the chat specific feature, and then I'm using other um, <coughs> other so portions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just using other portions. So would there be a benefit without multimodal? Like, yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, th this is definitely the uh, mostly just yeah um, using using just the Gemini chat chat model um, in that respect. Yeah. Any any more any more questions? Nope. I don't think so. All right. Cool. There you go.